can can you see my slide? Yes. Yes. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about the female pattern hair loss, about the diagnosis and differential diagnosis. So first of all, I would like to tell you what exactly happened to the hair in the female pattern hair. The key main features of female pattern hair loss is follicular miniaturization. It is a historical hallmark of androgenic alopecia in female. As you can see, this is a hair at the normal or the vertex area. It looks normal. One hair follicles have two or three, one follicular unit have two or three hair coming up on one opening. But in the thinning area, you can see the hair start to have a miniaturization. You can see the number of the last hair is increased and some empty follicle over here. With time by time, follicular miniaturization is more prominent in Syria, in Syria classification of female pattern hair loss. The pattern hair, like you see the female pattern hair loss, the hair loss was, was observed in the pattern. In women, the hair loss usually observed in the pathway or in the center area. But in some people, their, the hair loss start to have more prominent on the temporal area. Some, in some people, the temporal area is more thinning than in the top. And sometimes the thinning of the hair in women is extending to the occipital part or to the back part of the scalp. Okay, do you see my slide? Okay, let me start my presentations. Uh, <clears throat> okay, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the meeting committees. Thanks both of you for inviting me to, to talk in this uh, with all of you today, uh, my topic is about the uh, treatment option in female pattern hair loss, which uh, is uh, one of the important things in our clinical practice. Okay, so I have no conflicts of interest. Uh, before you start treating uh, this group of patients, you have to tell the uh, important information to to the patients before the treat, uh, because uh the the treatment is important uh because uh the treatment is needs a long term treatment uh the patients have to know that this is a lifelong treatment they cannot stop the treat if they want to keep the the, the good result and the key to success of the treatment is about the consistency and adherence to the to the uh, medications and the patients should... uh, my name is Associated Professor Ratapon Tuong Tong. I'm Head of Division of Hair Disorder and Hair Transplantation at Sidurat Hospital, Mahidon University, Bangkok, Thailand. And also being a President of Thai Society of Hair Restoration Surgery. This is a, a Society for Hair Restoration. Uh, I have no conflict of interest. Today, I will talk only three things. First, history that have risk of uh, uh, iron and vitamin deficiency. Second is how about the result of mineral and uh, uh, vitamin deficiency. And third is the risk. One, history. Uh, if the patient have history of blood loss, even though in the premenopausal women that have menstruation, GI bleeding in postmenopausal women, and men is have risk of iron deficiency. The second is pregnancy. In pregnancy, you must be aware that the patient can have risk of iron, zinc, and folic acid deficiency. For uh, it depends on physical examination in history. Yes. 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 Uh, I will. I'm not doing a screening test in our in every patient. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will sampling just only that high suspicious patient yes. that have history of hair blood loss or mm -hmm. uh, physical examination, I uh, usually open the eyelid to see the conjunctiva mm -hmm. in every female patient mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. see where is some clues for investigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, in our uh, real world practice, uh, it's, it, you know, it's not easy to do some blood, uh, so many blood tests uh, I, I think the uh, history taking is very important, but uh, is that insurance will have some interference on your practice, for example, mm -hmm. that it will uh, allow you to do blood tests in your daily practice? 